Greetings, ladies and mentalgens, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Why the Galaxy Fled, written by Random3x. Galactic Year 30.09.2948.3 It is recorded that humanity first detected the possibility of alien life nearly five centuries ago. Even back then, our only option was to send messages to these mysterious beings in the hopes of building relations. Everything from attempts at binary to sending atomic shapes like the hydrogen atom. The thing was, for whatever reason, the aliens never sent intentional replies. It was only errant broadcast. Researchers at the time put it down to multiple possibilities. They may have only developed radio technology. They might be far more advanced than us and not monitoring such primitive communications. The most wary of researchers, though posited, that they did not send replies because they did not want to, that they saw humanity as a threat. So many alluded to the dark forest hypothesis. Regardless, humanity pressed on. That was still funding dried up. It was often hard to justify the expenses of sending messages that would take 50 years to arrive, only for no replies to consistently return. It was 400 years post-detection that enough momentum and technological advancement that the idea of an exploration of this supposedly inhabited world was suggested. With the new inertial dampers and engines capable of 0.5c, humanity bravely took its first steps into the universe. An expedition that has finally reached its conclusion. The ship has only just started its forward momentum when it arrived in the solar system. The system itself had only five planets, and after sending out probes, it was discovered the signals originated from the fourth planet. With great trepidation, the expedition sent out messages to the world, hoping to allay any fears, to let them know humanity came in peace, and that they were there to extend a hand of friendship. Still though, no reply came. From the drones, they could see a world with magnificent cities, architecture, and spiral towers that boggled the mind, made from materials the AI could not identify. It was here, the idea humanity was likely too far behind them to detect our attempts at contact reemerged. So it was decided that humanity would send envoys to meet with the alien race, an actual first contact scenario, a thing that would be immortalized in the history books. Only when humanity landed, there was no one to greet us. No military, no government, not even an itinerant farm. It was then the team pressed on. They had picked a remote open area to land to show as little hostility as possible. Maybe it was too far. Only when they arrived in the city, they found no one. It was entirely abandoned. Everyone and everything that had looked to be this lively was, in fact, only automated systems still running. It was with this disappointment humanity accepted this was why we received no reply. Simply because there was no one to send a reply. With little else to do, we began to settle the world. The first extrasolar colony with several cities ready and waiting to be inhabited. Galactic Year 02.10.3000.1 It had been over 50 years since the first extrasolar colony of humanity was settled. In the past half century, with the help of researchers, engineers, and various other professionals, society had advanced leaps and bounds. Despite the abandoned nature of the world, its technology was so far superior that it was almost scary. Regardless, a journey that had initially taken nearly a hundred years to traverse could now be done in a single year. Such was the strange technology of the species that were now referred to as the Lost Ones. With the FDL drives and new material sciences, humanity looked once more to the stars, ever wondering who these aliens were and why did they vanish. Studying the records they left behind only spoke of an approaching calamity, one that would lead to extinction, one they had no way of safely stopping. It seemed, in the face of this calamity, that even they, with their technology, could not face, left them the only option of fleeing. But this only left humanity with more questions. What was it that they were running from, and would it come for humanity? 
It was in the face of these questions many observatories were re-established with the hopes of finding other aliens. Still though, many researchers maintained the dark forest hypothesis. That there was a danger out there and actively broadcasting ourselves would only draw them in like moths to a flame. It was during this time that humanity did detect a new world that had the signs of life. Broadcasts into space were frequent, and there was even a growing culture of enjoying alien entertainment and music. It was then the Great Soul Council decided to attempt contact once more. Once again, there was no reply, much to the relief of all though their entertainment broadcasts continued. Enough that humans had begun to decipher the language far quicker than the language of the world now named Gunga. After much deliberation, it was decided that a fresh expedition would be sent to this newly discovered world. The journey, even with the FTL drive, would take years. But to truly establish first contact was becoming the deepest hope of humanity. In a Pinterclass exploration cruiser, humanity set off to the stars with hope in their heart. They arrived in the system far quicker than anyone expected, as it seemed there was what was reverse-engineered AI described as a warp corridor. Arriving in system, humanity once again broadcast its arrival and sent probes. This time, they did not find a hive of activity. This world, like Gunga, was abandoned. Crazier still was the world turned out to be an ecumenopolis. A city covering an entire world was a ban. The entertainment that humanity had been so enjoying had been automatically set to broadcast while the aliens fled. Examining the records, they too spoke of a great evil approaching them. That this great evil had grown considerably stronger and, if they arrived, it would be the end of all. It was at this time some suggested that humanity may actually be this horror, but many still pointed out humanity was far less advanced than these aliens. If we were truly the threat they spoke of with such fear, they could have easily wiped us out. He was with a great sorrow that humanity learned yet another race was lost. The new planet became a hive of migration for the rapidly overpopulating worlds that humanity lived upon. The city would eventually become known as Eldorado, or the golden hue the buildings took when the sun was setting. Galactic Year 2408-3200.0 It was the bicentennial of the settling of Eldorado when the most heavily encrypted files of the race now known to be named the Ku were broken. It was a file teeming with information on a dozen worlds, all inhabited by other races. This was exactly what humanity had been so desperate for. They knew they weren't alone, and humanity did not like being alone. They wanted to interact with the greater universe, though since the initial files warning of a significant threat were published, many wished to remain silent. So many spoke of the dark forest and how we were already making too much noise, that we would inevitably draw the attention of whatever it was that two advanced civilizations had fled from. Still, the human spirit to explore could not be squashed so easily. So the humans did what humans always do. Groups and organizations independent of the government of the Council of Human Systems Control sent out trade missions to these newly identified worlds. For many of these mega corporations, it had become a competition to be the one to make first contact. Despite the government's warnings, 12 ships, each with a golden Hindi class, set off down to Warp Corridor to their designated worlds. It was a joyous time for much of humanity, with many gambling on which group would succeed. Some, though, wagered they would all find empty worlds, that they would all fail and return like their forebearers. Sadly, these people were correct. One by one, the ships returned with news of empty worlds. Some even reported the planets themselves had been blown up, and all they found were asteroids though they all carried the same warning from each world's records. The threat was spreading far faster than ever expected. Worlds would be destroyed if encountered. The words alone sent shockwaves through the community, and even the most hopeful of people began to echo the sentiments of the dark forest hypothesis. They had discovered worlds literally blown to pieces, and the record speaking of danger that would end worlds. Humanity decided on a path forward. They would colonize the remaining worlds and hope for the aliens to return. 
they would also begin to expand the military-industrial complex. If this unknown threat turned its sights on humanity, then humanity must be able to fight back no matter the odds. Luckily, with all the technology recovered, humanity accelerated their rate of its advancement. Galactic Gear 24.12.3300.0 It was time for a new expeditionary force to set off. Over the past hundred years, humanity had discovered countless worlds, all that used to be inhabited, but all either abandoned or destroyed. It was this destruction that led to humankind not only spreading out far more rapidly, but also becoming more heavily militarized. Weapons that could cut small moons in two, bombs that could harness the power of a star, along with countless more powerful weapons than even the aliens had managed, were developed. With these new tools, the fears of this unknown enemy began to abate as a new age of exploration continued. With the sheer number of worlds now colonized and available and waiting for human populations to catch up to colonize, humanity had declared itself a galactic empire. Though, to who it was declared is unknown, as so far humanity had only ever found traces of other races. The strangest development was an ecumenopolis that was transformed into a museum for each of the lost races. The new British Museum took artifacts from the countless abandoned and destroyed worlds and displayed them in memoriam, although lost and unknown. It was at this age of truly massive artificial structure like a Dyson Sphere was discovered. It had broadcasts detected, and with new scanner tools, life was also being detected. It was seeing this impossible structure that humanity began to wonder if it had finally found the enemy at last. With confidence, the great fleets of humanity gathered and set off to the punitive expedition towards the structure to bring justice for those that could not do so themselves. So many times humanity had hoped to meet another race, only to have it stolen from them. Centuries of frustration had finally reached its boiling point, and now it had a target. Arriving in system, the fleet was met with a vast armada of countless ships of all designs imaginable. But before the brutality of the human military, they quickly became nothing but space dust. The result of a uniquely human weapon named the Supernova Bomb. It was then that a broadcast appeared on the scanners. It was a communication request from the structure. The admiral in charge of the fleet hesitated, as this was the first chance at first contact. But it would also be with their enemies. Please, Javalis, we wish that you stay away. A panicking cue begged as their image appeared on display, their voice being automatically translated by the onboard AI systems. Seeing a coup, which even to this day had a popular following of their entertainment, shocked the Admiral. Had the coup been the enemy all along, only that had the cue called them a Javalis. That was the title given to the oncoming enemy. Throughout the centuries, it has been suggested many times humanity might be the enemy that they all feared. But time and time again, it will be pointed out that these aliens could have easily wiped out humanity with relative ease. Well, not anymore. But at the time, it was the truth. Are you a coup? The Admiral asked. Yeah! The coup looked panicked. The Chivalis knows of us! Please! We do not mean you harm. You have destroyed the great Funity fleet. We have been amassing men and tools to face your threat, only for you to sweep them aside. Why do you believe us to be the Javalis? The Admiral asked, looking perturbed that they were seeing as the great enemy. The display shifted to show an alien with a star-shaped head. It was a race that they didn't have a name for, but there was artwork on numerous worlds depicting them. Because you are the Javalis, Earthling. The alien declared with an accusatory tone. But we have never meant any harm to anybody. We sent messages and wished for peaceful contact, only to find your worlds abandoned. That is because every being from your world is death. You meant Earth is a death world. Indeed. Earth was a planet that was used for scientific experiments long ago, before life even existed on its surface. A foolish empire that no longer lives created a weaponized virus. One... It tested on the prisoners left on Earth. But if that was before life evolved, surely it was billions of years ago. Indeed. But the virus was too strong and endured. When life seeded itself on your world, the virus awoke from the dormant state and latched onto it. Life on your world did not survive. Near all life died. The first great extinction 
the Admiral asked, remembering a bit of history. Yes, that is an apt description. The beings that survived the virus became asymptomatic carriers. Beings within whom the virus encoded itself into the very DNA. So you think we carry a virus? Indeed. We have tried many times to wipe out all life on Earth. Many times we have failed. On our last attempt, we sent an asteroid to wipe out all life. The Admiral held back his choking noise, hearing the aliens were behind the extinction of the dinosaurs. Sadly, the virus only grew in strength as life continued to evolve, where at first it only did this. The display changed to show horrific scenes of agony from an unknown alien race. To this. The scene changed to show what looked like an early human was looking into a room with another alien. The alien rapidly turned to dust, just in the human's presence. If but one human steps on a world, all life, not of Earth, will rapidly die. Why didn't you just kill us? The Admiral asked. It evolved by vast amounts with each attempt. Many feared that should we eliminate humanity, it would evolve further and no longer require a host free to wander the galaxy as dust. It was decided humanity would be ignored and isolated. You were simple and primitive. Only for your species to develop enough to travel to the closest world. So you fled. Yes, we fled. Even in the errant call, the virus can survive the vacuum of space. And if it landed, all life would die. We of all the alliances chose to flee in the face of humanity. It seemed that we only accelerated your expansion by gifting you worlds ready to settle with technology to advance you. What if we leave you in peace? We will create a quarantine zone that humans cannot cross, sir. We would need not need to come into conflict. We can even return your worlds to you. Javalis, you do not listen. Any world a human has visited can no longer be inhabited by non-Earthlings. We have nowhere else to go. Every warp corridor leads to the Earthling worlds. We may not be able to return your worlds, but we can still leave you in peace. We will accept this offer, though. We have little choice. Our entire fleet was destroyed, and we have no means to build more. We will live in the sanctuary. Though I expect the death world shall visit us sooner or later. We will make it a case that is impossible, the Admiral declared. Like the twelve heavenly stars, the Admiral could not retort this one. The twelve worlds found centuries ago were all part of one group, and they had been known as the holy sites in what had been translated. We will do our best. That is all I can promise. That is all I can demand, the alien let out a long sigh. That is all that we can hope to demand. End of story. I would quickly like to thank our tier 5 patrons. Dragzoon WRE, Quantum Wednesday, Ambrose Catal, Lord Ashrakal, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.